Hey guys, a few days ago, I picked up the new Hero 9 from GoPro. And this camera is amazing. I saw a lot of footage online, which tipped me in the direction when I saw the buttery smooth stabilization. But more importantly, this time warp feature that creates buttery smooth hyperlapses. Here is a hyperlapse shot in my backyard. And it, while it looks great, it's a little bit too clean for my taste, and I'd like to add some motion blur. Thankfully, this is really easy to do in motion. Let's take a look. Before we start, I want to show you a really cool tip. I know that I need to import my GoPro clip, but I can't remember its resolution or frame rate. Well, you don't have to remember. With Motion open, go to the File menu and choose Import as Project or press Shift-Command-I. Navigate to the movie file on your Mac and click Import as Project. The movie is imported and is automatically added to the timeline. If I select the project icon in the Layers list, then look at the project properties in the inspector, you can see that the project was automatically created that matched my clip resolution and frame rate. How cool is that? While we have the project properties open, locate the Motion Blur section. What motion blur does is simulate the effect of a camera's mechanical shutter when the subject is in motion. Just like a real-world camera, slower moving objects will have less blur and faster moving objects will have more blur. Before you can see any motion blur, you need to turn it on. From the render menu, select motion blur. I'll move the playhead over this passing SUV. And as you can see, there's already some slight blur applied to the clip. You can define the size of the motion blur by increasing the number of frames over which the shutter is open. By default, it's set at 360, which equals one frame. As I drag to the right, more blur appears. I'll drag to roughly 1500 degrees. Scrubbing over the clip, you can see the result. I'm going to park my playhead at this no trespassing sign so you can see what motion refers to as the number of subframes that have been rendered for that particular frame. If I drag this slider all the way to the left, there's no recursive frame effect and you're essentially turning it off. If you want a higher quality motion blur effect with less artifacting, you'll want to crank this value up. I'm going to set this to 40, but keep in mind that higher values require more processing. Let's see what this looks like when played back. I'll set a play range out point at around 11 seconds. Pressing the spacebar, the clip is very stuttery, and even my iMac Pro can't decode all the frames fast enough. Also, it doesn't help that the GoPro records 4K and 5K files in the HEVC format, making the computer work even harder. So if you want to get real-time playback, or close to it, you'll want to go to the Mark menu and choose RAM Preview Play Range. Once the frames are cached, you'll be able to see the effect. That looks really cool. Let's see what happens if I crank the shutter angle and the sample sliders all the way to the max. Then press Command R to render the cache. Wow, that's a trippy effect, but I like it. When you're ready to render the final movie out, go to the file menu and choose Share Export Movie. In the Settings tab, choose your codec. I'm going to render this clip into the Apple ProRes codec and render just the play range, not the entire project. To check the render progress, click the spinning circle thingy in the lower right of the canvas. And here's the final movie. So what do you guys think of the new GoPro? I'll be taking this camera to Catalina this weekend, and I'm going to be trying some underwater hyperlapse. Hopefully, I'll have a video next week to show you my process. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching.